We are three in one and one in three. We are body, mind, and spirit. Our quest as evolutionary beings is to master each of these three aspects of our being so that we can evolve physically, mentally, and spiritually. We can harmonize these three aspects of our being by increasing our awareness of how and why they are connected. Mastering and harmonizing our body, mind, and spirit is the key to achieving total well-being. You will lighten up by purifying your body, liberating your mind, and unleashing your creative spirit. As you master and harmonize your body, mind, and spirit, you will unleash your highest potential in every aspect of your life. You will start living your best life as your highest self. Are you ready to lighten up? Voice America TV proudly presents Lighten Up, featuring your host, Suzanne Ross, inspirational author, motivational speaker, and wellness expert. Hello and welcome to Lighten Up. I am your host, Suzanne Ross, and today's episode is all about discovering more personal freedom by releasing the limiting beliefs and fears that we have around wealth and prosperity. Oftentimes, we find ourselves in circumstances where we feel trapped by our financial concerns and limitations which can lead to mental and physical stress and distress and leave a spiritual void in our lives. My guest today is Sally Domingo and she is a wealth empowerment expert. She's going to show us how to experience a higher sense of total well-being by showing us how to release our fears and limitations around prosperity so that we can experience more joy in our lives. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sally. Thank you so much for having me, Suzanne. It's nice to be here. I am so delighted that Sally has come to visit me in my home in Sedona, Arizona. And yesterday we had so much fun playing on the Red Rocks. Yeah, it was beautiful. This is really an amazing place. The light, the red light shining on the rocks is, you have to come here to experience it. It's really something. <laughs> I met Sally through a group of friends when we were networking and we became fast friends as she started to share with me her incredible journey, which has led her to become mm -hmm. a wealth empowerment expert. Sally had a couple of transformational shifts in her life which led her to where she is at now, very passionate about helping women become more empowered in their lives in general. Yeah, uh, it's been quite a journey for me. Uh, I, would, uh, I, I spent about 30 years as an entrepreneur, uh, earning a six-figure income and working myself to death, working on my community and, and raising my family. And, um, and I realized somewhere around 2008, uh, that I wasn't leaving a legacy. I was doing, I was really rocking my business. I was a great entrepreneur, but no one would really remember me when I left this, this earth uh, for what I had done. I had no great contribution. And I started thinking, well, you know, perhaps there's something I could do for a living where I could help everyday people and enjoy a better life. And I, uh, my journey began with uh, an offer from a life insurance company to train as a financial advisor. And so I started doing that. And, and it was really about 2010 that I started training. I would sit down with couples and the woman would often earn a, a high wage. A lot of times she was the breadwinner, but she would yield sole authority on their finances to her husband mm -hmm. and she would take a back seat and I would sit there for an hour and a half with this couple and giving them great advice and at some point the woman would start to sit back and withdraw and her husband would start to make the decisions and that bothered me because I thought well what if 
you know, down the line, what if something happens to him or to their marriage and whatever retirement plan he puts into place, well, that's what she's left with. And right away, the woman has sort of given her power away. She's given so her now power it's between away. the husband yeah. and the buddy who you know has apparently some knowledge of finances, hopefully. And the plan um, sits in a drawer and gathers dust. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody knows really what it is. So Sally had that transformational shift from going into a completely new industry, and then in 2010 was really faced with an incredible personal challenge. Yeah, uh, one day I got a phone call uh, and uh, the surgeon that called me said he just left my husband in uh, post-op and that he had a grapefruit-sized tumor uh, on his esophagus and his heart. And from that day on, everything changed. Uh, I, I mean, Mike was 53. Uh, he was 52, actually, when he was diagnosed. And I'm in mean, a track coach. She seemed to be very healthy. Uh, and we really thought that we had the rest of our lives. And they put him through chemo and radiation. And we lost him five months later. And it was then that my ideas about life completely changed. Because I realized that we thought we had the second half of our lives to go. And... I don't know. <laughs> he got gypped. He, he didn't have that. He didn't have that second chance, mm -hmm. but I did. Mm -hmm. And I figured that I had another 50 years to live, and I was, I was going to do it differently. And everything I've done from that day has changed. It sounds to me like it gave you an opportunity to sort of reflect on how he might have done some things differently had he been given the opportunity, maybe spending more time with the family or just more personal time, not working so hard. Yeah, we both. Mm -hmm. uh, we were so caught up in this grind of making money and serving the community, making money and serving the community, that we never put our, stuck our heads out of the sand somehow and looked around and realized that there was a big world out there. And I'm so excited now every morning when I wake up about the options you know for the day what am I gonna do today and how can it be better and how can I help people more and I uh, had just an awful lot of changes in the last few years uh, I would say that the biggest since losing him was letting go of my my house my mortgage ah deciding that's a big one <laughs> yeah I, I made the decision I mean here I was a single widowed mom with a 3,000 square foot house and a huge property. And I was constantly cleaning and, and raking leaves and all of a sudden I'd, I'd lost my gardener and I'd lost my repairman and <laughs> everybody that did the other stuff. And I decided to let it go. And it was huge for me. Mm -hmm. Downsizing, I sold my house. I downsized into a small little cottage and I'm renting. And what a huge change. I don't have a big mortgage payment. I don't have the maintenance costs. I was spending, you know, like a lot of people here in the Bay Area at least, you know, in a lot of places, mm -hmm. 500 to $1,000 a month just on maintaining the house. And more than that, I suddenly had time. I had time on my hands. Freedom. Freedom. That sounds so liberating. I could wake up on a Saturday morning <laughs> and I didn't have anything to do. It was great. And um, now I, I intentionally plan for vacations and trips and, and I plan my work around my life now. And my, I don't have that, that feeling that I have to make more money to pay the mortgage and you know, I have to work harder. All of that is gone now. Mm. I've learned the tricks and the tools in life to really live every single day, almost as if it's my last, effortlessly. Mm. Beautifully said. What a wonderful place to be, especially after experiencing such personal challenges, to just grow out of it. When we come back from break, 
Sally is going to tell us more how she teaches women about finances so that they can have more personal freedom. And rather than living to work, start working to live. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. We'll be right back. I'm Sally Domingo and I'm a wealth empowerment expert. I help six-figure women who struggle with working too hard and not having time. What I found is that they spend all their time working, paying their bills, and juggling their personal lives. And what they really want is to master their money, travel, and have more fun. I've spent the last several years as a financial advisor to many professional men and women and I deeply understand their struggles to keep up with the demands of work and family. Today, I'm an author, speaker, and wealth coach. I get to speak on stages locally and all over the country. I hike the Sierras with my kids. My boyfriend and I travel, weekend getaways, New York, Paris, and I still have time to spend with my dogs and my chickens. My money works for me, and I can teach you how to make your money work for you. Hello and welcome back to Lighten Up. I am here with Sally Domingo, wealth empowerment expert. And she's here today to talk about her business, Women Wealth Mastery. We're really focusing on letting go of the limiting beliefs and fears around wealth and security. Where do these limiting beliefs and fears come from, Sally? Like everything else, they tend to come from our childhood. I talk with clients all the time about what holds them back uh, from investing, from saving, uh, what it is that makes them, drives them to make bad financial decisions. And most often it's from their childhood. Um, a lot of times if you look back uh, at your childhood, you can remember your parents arguing about money. Yes. Uh, they, and parents can empower their children or disempower their children without even knowing it. As in all things, we, we all live with a small child inside of us. And whatever the experiences that we had when we were a child rear their heads in our adult lives. So yeah. it's really important that if you're going to become successful financially, that you realize that it's your money. It's your money, it's your life. And you can make good decisions or you can make bad decisions and the only one it really is going to affect in the long run is you. And it's very important to drop any money story that came from your mom or from your dad because that's their money story. It's not yours. Absolutely, and it's really liberating to know that you can break free from that. You sure can. You sure can. Uh, one, of, one of the things that I do for women in my program is I help them go back and clean up their thoughts around money and, and see that, that it can be changed and that you start with today. You just start with what you have today, not what you had yesterday, not what you lost or anything else, but what you have today and what do you want to do with that. I just love Sally's approach because instead of saying you need to take more responsibility with your money, you know, which sounds like your father talking to you, <laughs> yeah. she is saying, no, you just need to become more empowered around wealth and prosperity mm -hmm. and also the end result, which mm -hmm. is to have more time, more personal mm -hmm. freedom. You know, so it's not just all about the finances. It's about the overall picture of your life. And so she teaches us how to create more time and health. She has a wonderful equation. Would you like to share that with us? Yes. Uh, it, it's this. It's really mathematical in nature. And if you go back to your geometry, uh, it's a commutative property. <laughs> Money is equal to time plus health. Think about that. It takes time and health to generate money. And it works the opposite way as well. If you don't have your health, you can't make money. And if you don't have money, you don't have time. And if you don't have time, your health goes down. So it's a balance. 
there's a real fine balancing act that we all have around those three things. Absolutely. I can see how they're so interrelated because you can really sacrifice your health by working so hard to make more money. But then if your health goes, you're not available to make money. It's and this really is what women do. I see women do this. I have lived this. I understand it. And so many women I talk to are, are stuck in this, this pattern of working harder to make more money because money is going to solve their problems. But then they lose their health because they're working so hard. <laughs> and the minute you lose your health, then you've lost your time and then you can't make any more money. So it's more important to have that balance, have that balanced life and be doing the things that make you happy. And if you're happy, you're healthy. And if you're healthy, you have the time and the money comes. It just comes. So you've got to start there. You've got to start with your happy spot. Oh, I like <laughs> that. And it sounds like it starts with clearing the limiting beliefs that may be related to your childhood. Mm -hmm or different experiences you've had so far in your life. Mm -hmm. But then to move forward, maybe by creating more simplicity, like you're saying, giving up your mortgage, or maybe just simplifying your life by moving to a smaller house and not being a slave to your house. You know, my dad always said, you can have anything in this life you want, but you can't have everything. So choose wisely, choose your priorities, and then it all falls into place. Yes, I really like that. And then Sally also shows us how we can experience a higher sense of total well-being around wealth by learning these simple tools that she has to offer. And one of her tools is the calendar exercise. Yeah, you know, things don't happen unless you plan for them to happen. And one of the things that I find that women suffer from, men do too, but women particularly, because we've overextended our, our, our energy and our time, is that we don't give ourselves permission to take time off and do things for us. We don't have permission to take vacation and to take care of ourselves, take care of our health. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing that I do when I, I come across a woman who really um, is in this, this grind is I have them pull out a calendar. If you pull out your calendar for the next year and circle four or five three day weekends. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Just <laughs> circle them and you label them vacation. And then you take at least one uh, three day weekend a month. Mm -hmm. And you also take a week or two weeks of solid time for a longer trip farther away mm. and you circle these on the calendar and what you've done is you set your intention to take that time for you and no one but you and you're giving yourself permission to do that and the amazing thing is when you've done this and you come to next month and you flip that page on your calendar and there, lo and behold, on the 24th, it says you're supposed to take time off and go somewhere. You do. You do. You plan around it. Yeah, suddenly, mm -hmm. instead of working your, planning your whole life around your work, you're planning your work around your life. Oh, and like that's that when shift. it all changes. Yes, and I like how you said just be, because I think being more present has been an important part of your journey or discovering the power of being more present. Yes, that's, that's really important, Suzanne. When I lost my husband, getting through that first year was the hardest thing I ever did. And when, you, when you're grieving, the world is swirling around you and it seems like everyone's going so fast. And they are. <laughs> Everybody's running this way and running that and they all have agenda. And suddenly you don't have an agenda and you feel lost. And what changed it for me is that I ended up going out in nature. And I mean daily, I would go out in nature and I would sit on a rock and I would focus on the here and now, just what was right directly around me. Suddenly I could hear the birds. Mm -hmm. I could feel the sunlight warm on my skin and everything else went away. And I've learned 
it's, that's really the secret to happiness. You learn, and it's just like what the Dalai Lama teaches. It's very fundamental. You learn to be present several times a day, mm. and it will change your life. I've had that same experience, and I created an exercise called Moment, where I'm walking along in a beautiful place, along a stream and all I'm thinking about is the emails I need to respond to or the phone calls I need to make and suddenly I just say moment and yeah. it brings me right back into the moment mm -hmm. and oftentimes I'll see a beautiful egret sitting mm -hmm. alongside the stream or you know mm -hmm. flowers on a bush that I would have walked right past right. hadn't I brought myself back into the moment and I call it freeze frame you can freeze frame right in the grocery store just stop dead right there and look at your feet and suddenly you look up and you'll see the child in the shopping cart next to you Aww. smiling at you. <laughs> you will see things that you've never seen before. And it's very important. That is really important. And you can mm -hmm. set an intention to see the beauty and grace of every moment as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just a shift in perception to really appreciate the, the moment that you're in as well. Mm -hmm. That is so powerful. When we come back from break, Sally is going to share with us a wonderful analogy she calls the closet analogy. You'll really enjoy that. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Lighten Up. I am here with Sally Domingo, wealth empowerment expert. We've been focusing a lot on personal freedom and the happiness and joy that you can experience when you let go of limiting beliefs and fears around wealth. But now we're going to really focus in on money. So, Sally, can you share Thank with you. us how we can create more financial freedom in our lives and have our money work for us rather than working so hard for it? Well, now that we've established that we can start today, we can start with what we have, we've cleared out all of those horrible thoughts in our minds about, you know, do we deserve it, do we not deserve it? Okay, now we know we deserve it, right? <laughs> Now is the time to open our closets and look inside and clear it all out and start fresh. So where do you start? Where do you start? Nobody knows anything about finances. Okay, it's very easy. Your financial closet is just like your closet at home. Okay, you, you've got all, you haven't done a lot of big investing. You've done little investing. You've got a couple little bank accounts. You've got your 401k over here. Well, I liken those two polyesters okay you've got your polyesters your rayons and your cottons well you've got a closet full of polyesters investments that aren't really substantial and you don't really know even what they're doing there and they were easy the next step is to put those building blocks in place find out what are the rayons and what are the cottons of investments and it's very very simple uh, 
And I, I teach women in my program about these things, and I'm not going to go into length. Mm -hmm. But if you just know that there are conservative investments and there are higher growth investments, and you have the freedom to do whatever you want, okay? You have your conservative investments with your savings accounts, your money market accounts, your CDs, and there are you know bond funds that are more conservative that won't bonds basically won't appreciate a lot they won't depreciate a lot so they're always a long-term safe investment they have something in bonds okay so you got those okay and then uh -huh. you've got things that are there have a little bit more risk you can go out a little farther you can go out on a limb and buy a cotton dress okay there are stocks okay and there are mutual funds, which are families of stocks. And you can work with an investment advisor who can tell you um, what the, the, the high performing mutual fund families are, what the, the most stable ones are. But when you've got that dollar spread over three to 5,000 things, that's a safe bet that you're not gonna go wrong. In every facet of your wealth, you diversify. You don't put everything in your 401k. You don't put everything in your bank account. You spread it around. So the, the most empower, empowering thing that I can say is when it comes to your wealth closet, have some cottons, have some polyesters, have some rayons, have some acrylics, but make sure that you've got money in lots and lots of different pots, okay? Have some money in mutual funds. Have some money in bonds. If, if there's one or two stocks that you really like, it's okay, but don't put a lot in the one thing. It really does sound like diversity is the key and to spread your investments around. Yes, you can't go wrong. You really can't go wrong. As long as, the, the way you go wrong with your money is to do nothing or to put everything in one thing. It sounds like it. That <laughs> and having more self-confidence around your ability to handle your money it's your money. It's your money. If you're confident about it, you will make good decisions. And Sally does help you feel so much more empowered around wealth by teaching you where to put your money and also just by showing you how your money can really work for you. Thank you so much for being here today with me, Sally. I've truly enjoyed your visit to my home. And she has taught me so much about wealth. <laughs> I really needed to learn as well, like we all do. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Lighten Up. And remember, live well, love life. If you feel like you're working too hard, and feel uncertain about your financial future, and you just don't have time to live the life you want to live, I have a gift for you. Go to my website now where you can schedule your Woman of Wealth Breakthrough Session with me to show you the road map to master your money and travel more. Come with me. I'll show you how to play and have fun again. This program has been a community service presented by The Awakening Center, a nonprofit organization for those seeking a higher way of living and being.